Our project consists of three layers of paper placed inside of one another and shaped into cones. The third layer is suspended and contains the eggs. In between each layer are rubber bands and on the top of the entire project are flaps made of paper shaped into a parachute. In the engineering process, we made goals to maximize drag, minimize mass, and extend the time of impact. To maximize drag, we constructed a parachute that expanded to the maximum dimensions allowed by the guidelines. Doing this maximized cross-sectional area, and according to the equation of resistive force, this would then increase the upward directed drag force upon the structure. This increase in drag force made the net force acting upon the structure less downward. According to Newton's second law, with a constant mass, decreasing the net force will proportionally decrease the acceleration. Modeling resistive forces as a linear function of velocity, the terminal velocity will be equal to mg over b, which means a lower acceleration will equate to a lower terminal velocity. Likewise, using the same equation, a lower mass will lead to a lower terminal velocity. According to the momentum equation, the momentum of the project will be significantly less when mass and velocity upon impact, which would be equivalent to terminal velocity, are minimized. This means that the change in momentum when the project hits the ground will be much lower. Furthermore, we maximize the time of the impact by maximizing the height of the cone that will crush upon hitting the ground and maximizing the amount of rubber bands that will compress after the cone is crushed. Additionally, the suspended third cone will allow the eggs to continue their motion for an even longer duration after the front of the cone hits the ground. According to the impulse equation, FT equals MV, minimizing mass and velocity and maximizing the time of the collision will consequently decrease the force applied to the eggs. Our final design was a conical structure. So as we moved the eggs away from the tip of our project, the walls became wider, allowing a maximum of three eggs. We placed the eggs in miniature cups filled with rubber bands. Each cup was then placed at the top of the third layer surrounded by more rubber bands. These rubber bands separated the eggs and prevented them from hitting each other with a significant amount of force. The eggs were then covered with duct tape to keep them in place and to prevent them from falling out of the top after the collision. Additionally, the suspended design of the third layer prolongs the egg's motion after the project falls on its side following the initial collision with the ground. Because of the small mass of the paper structure, large cross-sectional area of the parachute, and collapsing tip rubber bands and egg suspension of the cone, our project should provide near maximum protection of the eggs by decreasing the force applied on them during the collision, and therefore it works successfully. After months of solemn pondering and years of meditation in the Himalayas, we emerged with tears in our eyes, but with strength in our hearts, to analyze the data of our egg drop project. For the falling motion of the structure, the initial velocity was zero and the final velocity when it hit the ground was around 21.317 meters per second according to Logger Pro. The initial vertical position was around 107 feet. The total time elapsed during the fall was 3 seconds and we calculated the average velocity to be approximately 10.87 meters per second. The position versus time graph is a second power equation because there is velocity and acceleration to the structure of the cone. However, Logger Pro's generated equation differs from our equation because our project began falling at 18 seconds in the data set instead of 0 seconds. The velocity versus time graph is nearly linear since the slope and acceleration are nearly constant. No terminal velocity is reached, but the slight decrease in acceleration in the graph shows a terminal velocity is imminent. For the impact of the structure, the initial velocity would be 21.317 meters per second. 
and the final velocity would be zero. The time elapsed according to Logger Pro was 0.2 seconds before the structure completely came to rest. The impact of our egg drop structure is best modeled as a cubic, as it decelerates quickly initially as the flat parachute hits the ground, and then decelerates at a lesser rate once the outer layer of paper begins crushing. Deceleration will be uniform or constant because the structure isn't perfectly uniform. The Logger Pro graphs and data are not very accurate since the impact took place in such a short period of time and the frame rate of the camera was not fast enough and the resolution wasn't high enough to detect the small displacements occurring for the structure during the impact. When analyzing the impact of the egg structure upon the ground, we began by gathering relevant numbers which included the mass of the entire structure plus the three eggs and the velocity just before it hits the ground, which equated to around 21 meters per second when we were using Logger Pro. Also, just to relate the two forces we get, we found the force to break an egg was around 50 newton. So we began to find the acceleration when the displacement was about 0.5 inches when the egg structure flipped and the eggs were on the very bottom. And so that was the worst case scenario. And then we'll be relating those numbers to when the displacement was around 12 inches in the ideal situation when our egg structure would have gone straight down without flipping and the egg would have crossed the entire section of our structure to the ground. So we plugged in the relevant numbers into this equation and found acceleration for a displacement of 0.5 inches to be around 1700 meters per second squared. And in comparison, the 12 inch displacement caused the eggs to accelerate around 745 meters per second squared. So using these two numbers, we then used F equals MA to calculate the force upon the eggs, which came around a whopping 9,177 for the worst case scenario. And for the best case scenario, the force became around 382 newtons, significantly less. These two force values show how significantly an upright fall would have affected the force upon the eggs. In an ideal situation with the cone falling upright, a force of less than 400 newtons would have been applied to the eggs and would still break the eggs because 150 newtons are needed to break the eggs. But this number isn't quite accurate because to calculate it, we used the velocity before impact from the flipped fall. With an upright fall, the conical structure would have channeled air into the parachute and significantly decrease the terminal velocity. Thus, decreasing the velocity upon impact and therefore decreasing the force applied to the eggs. Taking into account dissipated energy, the force will be further reduced and this would have proven our project to be an effective means of lowering the net force applied to the eggs. Our project didn't perform it as expected, but the engineering behind its elements were sound. Since we placed the eggs at the very top of the structure, more mass was concentrated toward the top than toward the tip. Because of this, the project depended on being dropped perfectly downward to stay upright. Since the project was held at the tip of the cone and released at an angle, air resistance did not affect the upper half's motion as significantly as the less massive lower half. According to ne Newton's second law, this means that the upper half will, would accelerate at a faster rate, causing the structure to flip mid-flight. To conclude, evening the weight distribution or placing the eggs toward the tip of the cone would have solved this problem and hence successfully protected the eggs.